Hi everyone and welcome back to Making Things with String. My name is Kate uh, and this is my YouTube channel, uh, my crafty YouTube channel. Um, here on this channel I just post updates about whatever crafts I've been getting into. Uh, a lot of it is cross stitch and knitting, um, but I dabble in some other things sometimes too. Today we have some diamond painting uh, content if you're interested in that. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate anybody who spends the time uh, to watch uh, and follow along with what I've been crafting. Uh, and I know that this video um, is a bit delayed. My usual or desired time frame between videos is about two weeks. Um, unfortunately, this beginning of 2023 has been pretty tough for me. Uh, so far, I um, lost my grandmother at the at the end of January, uh, and then soon after that, um, my dog Rosalyn also passed away. She, we suddenly found out that she was quite sick, and uh, things deteriorated pretty quickly, and we had to let her go. So I'm I'm really heartbroken about both of those things, um, and those are the reasons that you know I, I haven't been able to post. A floss tube video um, as frequently as I would have hoped to. However, um, I did still have a lot of time to craft <laughs> and uh, you know I actually got to spend some time with my mom crafting when um, I was visiting uh, around my grandmother's passing and so that was really nice and yeah yeah still still been making time to craft so I do have a lot of stuff to update you on. Um, so yeah, thanks again for hanging out. Glad to see you again. I missed you and let's, uh, let's get into it. So I like to start off every video with a little shout out to a floss tuber that I know and love. Uh, and today I would like to shout out, uh, uh, Corinne from Corey Creates. Uh, so Corey Creates is uh, an amazing floss tube channel that I've been watching for a while now. Um, Corey does a lot of cross stitch um, and she also does some quilting, some amazing quilting. I'm not a quilter myself, but I do love watching um, and seeing what she's been quilting. Um, and yeah, most in particular, I'm, I'm uh, watching for the cross stitch content that she has. Um, so she's got like quite a, a diversity of stuff that she stitches. She does a lot of full coverage, but she does some non-full coverage stuff as well. Um, I've noticed a bit of a theme in Corey's stitches that has to do with sort of delicious treats and sweets and pastries, tea time and things like that. Um, which I love. I think that uh, I think that all that stuff is great, and it makes me hungry uh, watching her. So yeah, I think if you're interested, you should go check out Corey. Um, I love her channel. All right, so um, I guess I'll start with an update on Whipgo. So Whipgo is something that I am participating in this year. It is something that is. Uh, run by and created by uh, Jesse Marie Does Stuff on YouTube. Uh, and the basic idea is that there's a bingo board grid that I have placed a bunch of uh, patterns in one in each of these uh, 25 grid bingo grid spaces. Um, and every month Jesse draws two numbers and you're supposed to work on whatever two things get drawn according to whatever goal you have set for your WIPCO board. So I am doing Christmas ornaments for my WIPCO. Um, and so I, my last video was mid-January, so I, was, I do have a bit of an update on my January uh, WIPCO. I had finished completely the first ornament that was drawn, which was that tall treat, um, cute little giraffe in a sweater. Um, and that actually put me ahead because for my WIPCO goals for each of these ornaments when they get drawn, my plan is to stitch half of them that month, half of each ornament. So I finished that one, which means I have sort of a free finish at some point later this year that I've already completed. 
Um, and in my last video, I also showed you the second, my progress on the second Whip Go pull for January, and that was the Nordic Nutcracker. Uh, so this is a pattern from the Jingle Ball Bobbles book. This pattern is by Tiny Modernist or the Tiny Modernist. Um, and it's a cute little network cracker. So I actually did a little bit of voiceover on some video footage of that piece. I will insert it here. Right, so here is my progress on the Nordic Nutcracker. Uh, this is one of the Jingle Ball uh, bobble patterns that I got in my book of Jingle Ball Bobbles. Sorry for the shadow. <laughs> I don't really know how to stop that from happening. Um, anyways, so this was one of my two whip go pulls for January. Um, I showed it in my last video and this is the progress that I've made. Um, so this will be it. This will be getting put away until it gets called again in whip go when I'll finish it up. Um, so the entire background of that uh, circle is going to be stitched in that green color. The pattern also has uh, some motifs around the outside. I'm still undecided if I'm going to stitch those or not because I think it makes a fine little ornament um, without those. But yeah, this one's really exciting. Um, I actually realized that I, there's a little bit of back stitching, some like yellow back stitching on the boots that I didn't get done. Uh, but I did all the black back stitching and excitingly I did the French knots. Um, on his little eyeballs. So like I mentioned in my last video, these are the first French knots I've ever done. And I thought that they were really fun. They were relatively easy to learn how to do. I think they look good. I was really worried that his eyes would look really wonky. I think they look, you know, a little wonky, but I think that's kind of um, appropriate <laughs> in this case. So yeah, this is my Nordic Nutcracker. Really love this guy. And uh, I'm excited to finish it up uh, when it gets called again. All right, so those were the two Whipgo pulls for January. Uh, I have two new Whipgo pulls for February and I took a little video clip to show you my current progress uh, on that and sort of explain how Whipgo is going this month so far. So my first February whip go uh, pull um, turned out to be this Country Cottage Needleworks piece. Um, and I sort of cheated a little bit <laughs> with, get, with getting this piece started. Uh, so the number that was actually called was a one of the Jingle Ball Bobbles um, and it was not even a mouse. Uh, by Lindy Stitches. However, when it came to getting that started, I just felt like I didn't really want to start that one. Uh, but I have been wanting to start on these Gingerbread Village pieces by Country Cottage Needleworks, and I've had them kitted up for a while. And so, you know, with Whipgo, they say your board, your rules. And so I decided that um, I didn't want to stitch not even a mouse, but I did want to stitch this gingerbread house. So I just swapped out the two spots where not even a mouse was on my Whipgo board for this gingerbread house. Uh, gingerbread house number two by um, Country Cottage Needleworks. And uh, this is the progress that I made so far in February on this piece. Uh, and so, even though it is only one of the two Whipgo pieces, uh, or Whipgo uh, pulls that happened for this month, uh, the other one was a, one of the tree lot trees um, that I love and do want to stitch, but I just have been finding that um, I'm not really like feeling super keen about starting another piece. So this month, uh, I might just keep stitching on this cottage for the rest of the month and see how far I get. Um, and I don't feel too bad about doing that because like I said, it's just supposed to be for fun. Um, and yeah, I, I'm kind of ahead from last month anyway because I, uh, I stitched that full tall treat piece, that little giraffe 
um, ornament and I was only supposed to stitch half of it. So yeah, we're going to keep going with this. So, uh, this piece is exciting because, uh, I'm using some fancy fabric. It's a uh, fiber on a whim, 32 count affogato linen. Uh, and it's also exciting because I'm using the called for threads and that includes some, uh, weeks, dye works and classic color works. Um, uh, threads so that brown and the red and the green are all classic color works the white is just dmc um, but yeah i'm having a lot of fun uh, stitching this cute little piece and that's how far i've gotten so far so i'm just i'm gonna keep working on this whenever i feel like it uh, throughout february Right, so hopefully you enjoy my cute little gingerbread house i'm really enjoying stitching it um and yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with the flow and not worry too much about technically not getting that uh, not getting that second whip go start for this month and just enjoy my gingerbread house. So another thing that I meant to update on um, before now is 24 hours of cross stitch. So that was something that happened uh, mid January, one of the weekends of January. Um, kind of right after my last video, uh, there was a 24 hour of cross stitch weekend in which I aimed to and succeeded in uh, spending 24 hours during the course of that weekend uh, cross stitching. Um, so it was, you know, more cross stitching than I typically do in a weekend, but I found that it was doable mostly because I emptied out my weekend just uh, for that purpose. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. This is something that happens like three or four times a year. There's a Facebook group. Uh, 24 hours of cross stitch Facebook group. If you're interested in knowing when those are happening, you can join that Facebook group. Uh, so I'll just sort of update you on the projects that I worked on uh, during that 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. Um, the first one that I worked on was the Modern Folk Embroidery 2023 uh, Stitch Along, Reaching Skyward. Um, this is a beautiful piece that I hope you're at least a little bit familiar with um, by now. Uh, it's something that I'll be working on throughout this whole year. Um, I'm hoping that I have a picture of what it looked like when I started uh, the 24 hour of cross stitch weekend and then hopefully a photo of what it looked like at the end of the 24 hours uh, of cross stitch weekend so that you can kind of get an idea of how much progress I made uh, on that piece during that weekend. So at the start of uh, 24 hours of cross stitch on Friday, January 20th, uh, that MFE sal started with about 2,740 stitches, which is 5.73% complete. Um, and then by the end, uh, I had 3,338 stitches or 6.98% complete. So this isn't the only piece that I worked on, but for that piece, um, that's how much I got done. So pretty good. And then since then, obviously, I have made a lot of additional progress on it. So I'll show some footage here of what it's currently looking like. I even, um, you know, ironed it today. So it looks all nice and fresh. Um, still, still really, really enjoying this piece. Um, I have been, um, there's sort of two different versions of the pattern that comes with it when you purchase it. Um, there's this sort of front cover uh, art and then alternate art for pretty much everything. And I've chosen a lot of the alternate art for the interior stuff. So like the tree, the three tree motifs at the top are the alternate art. Uh, the pillars are the alternate art, like the pillars underneath those trees are the alternate art and the big almost full coverage motif um, and the in the center underneath those trees is also the alternate art uh, i am going to be keeping the deer and the other stuff on the side from the um front page option a i don't know what to call it um, but yeah, I, I really love that it has those options to choose from and I love stitching on this piece and I, I feel like I'm still, um, I'm still caught up. Like I, I don't feel behind on it, although I'm not done the February portion. It's not the end of February yet, so I'm not too worried about it. 
Um, and I, and I do enjoy stitching it. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's coming along great. Really, really glad to be, uh, to be doing this piece. It's super fun. Uh, okay. So the next piece that I worked on during the 24 hours of cross stitch was my modern folk embroidery Quaker sister sampler. I, th I think going into that weekend, I was kind of hoping that I would spend that whole weekend um, seeing how much progress I could get done, hopefully trying to finish that Quaker sister sampler. Um, but yeah, here's sort of an image of what it looked like, hopefully before I started working on it that weekend. And then um, some footage of of what it looks like now uh, and basically how far I got um, during the 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my progress. Um, there's still a little bit left of work on this um, and I'm excited to get it done. It's just not done yet though. Although um, ironing it today and making it look all nice and pretty um, motivated me to get going on it again. So I'm looking forward to finishing it up. All right, uh, the next thing that I worked on for 24 hours of cross stitch, once I kind of got sick of working on the Quaker Sister Sampler is my Needs No Paint uh, piece. This is a Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, pattern. The art is by Jill Claire and this is sort of a full coverage piece that I am slowly plugging away at. Uh, Needs No Paint started at 19.48% complete uh, at the beginning of the 24 hours of cross stitch weekend or 16,326 stitches uh, and by the end of the weekend I was um, I was at 20.15%, so that's 16,883 stitches. Um, that's a total of about 550 stitches, I believe. Um, so yeah, pretty good, pretty good little bit of progress on there. Um, and I, I'm hopefully showing some footage here of what it currently looks like. I can't remember if I worked on this again since, um, 24 hours of cross stitch or not, but here's what it looks like currently. I haven't worked on it in a while. I've been focusing a lot on modern folk embroidery cell and on whip go projects. So I need to remedy that. Oh, and diamond painting and knitting and all the things. It's just really hard, you know, to work on everything. <laughs> um, but hopefully soon I will get back to needs no paint and I'll make some more progress on it. All right, so the last thing um, that I did work on during that 24 hours of cross stitch weekend was a little bit of um, my nutcracker, but I've already shown you the nutcracker when I was talking about whip go, so I'm not gonna show it here. And I don't really have like an estimate of how many stitches I did on the nutcracker because that's sort of a print pattern, or it's not, it's a PDF pattern, but I printed it anyway. Um, I also worked on the nutcracker. Some of that progress was during 24 hours of cross stitch. Uh, yeah, so 24 hours of cross stitch was super fun and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again. Uh, hopefully it falls on another weekend where I'm able to just kind of dedicate time to stitching that way again. So in my last video, I mentioned that I have been um, working on Stitch for Pride 2023, um, kind of trying to keep up with that. So I uh, have been trying to do that still in February. I have not been to Cape and Cal yet to check out their wares, but that's still uh, on my list of things to do. Uh, and yeah, February is uh, Black History Month, and so um, the prompts and such um, for Stitch for Pride have to do with um, uh, Black uh, LGBTQ um, topics uh, as well. We watched a video about Gladys Bentley, who's um, this sort of um, lesbian um, woman from the 1920s era who was um, a musician and known for um, sort of dressing in stereotypically men's clothing um, and just her sort of story. And I uh, did some reading as well on um, the sort of 1920s era uh, in New York and sort of the impact that that has had 
on uh, LGBTQ issues um, over the years. So really, really interesting stuff. The prompt for this month is to stitch on a whip um, that celebrates or features black community members or that was designed by a black designer. So I didn't actually currently have any whips that fit that description, which um, I would like to remedy. So I spent some time um, on Instagram, searching around and trying to follow some more uh, black stitchers and uh, looked around for some black designers to check out. Um, I landed on shaded stitchery. I've seen a lot of people stitching their uh, data portraits in Paris 1900s cross stitch pattern, uh, which is a really, really cool pattern. I love the idea of it. Um, I also, you know, searching their website, really enjoy the black butterfly sampler, which I think Elizabeth Ann can stitch is stitching, or I saw somebody else stitching that black butterfly sampler. I would love to stitch that sometime. Um, but I am currently trying not to purchase new patterns. So I followed them uh, and I signed up for their newsletter, which gives you access to some freebies on their website. And this is a huge tip that I would suggest to anybody who is trying to save a bit of money on cross stitch patterns. I've noticed that lots of designers have a few um, just freebies available on their website. So uh, for now, I decided to check out their freebies. And the nice thing about freebies too is that they tend to be smaller patterns. So I figured that this might be something that I could um, accomplish in this month of February. So what I found was this pattern called Live Long Lieutenant. And uh, it is a very cute, tiny little design uh, in honor of Nichelle Nichols. She played Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek. Um, and she actually, the actress passed away in 2002. And so, um, so yeah, Shaded Stitch recreated this, uh, this little Star Trek pattern um, to honor, honor her and how sort of groundbreaking uh, it was to have a woman black um, actress represented on a TV show like that. So I really like that. I'm, I'm kind of nerdy if you hadn't figured that out yet. Um, but another thing that makes this in particular really great, like I, I'm not a super huge Star Trek fan, um, but at work I recently moved into a new sort of office space and um, the desk that I have in there was this desk um, that we had in storage from somebody previously who worked in our office. Anyways, it's this gigantic desk. I'll see if I can find a picture of what it currently looks like in my office. Anyways, we've dubbed this desk the Enterprise and therefore my office is known as Deep Space Nine. Um, my wonderful friend Jill got me some cute Star Trek um, post-it notes for my office for Christmas. Um, and so I think this cute little pattern is going to look great uh, in my new office and, um, you know, will always sort of be a reminder, uh, a reminder for me of Stitch for Pride and of Black History Month and all of that stuff. Um, so I whipped that up today. I stitched it. It did not take me very long at all. And um, I just kind of stitched it on some navy uh, Zweiger Ada. I think it's 16 count. I used the called for DMC except for the skin tone brown. I couldn't, I didn't have that. So I, I swapped out for a comparable uh, color that I did have. And I just sort of frayed, I cut it uh, close-ish to the, to the stitching and frayed um, the edge around it. And I'm gonna sort of clip it either on my bulletin board, my uh, cork board in my office, or I've got like a little clampy um, board <laughs> that I might clip it onto. And yeah, really, really happy with that. It was super fun and quick and it's a really cute little pattern. 
All right, so let's move on to some knitting content. I have two knitting projects that if you've been around for a while, you will have seen before. Uh, so let's first talk about my green and gray socks. Um, I've finished them, but you might notice that they look a little different <laughs> than last time you saw them. So last time I had finished one of these socks and had started the other one but the one that was complete did not have contrasting heels and toes so um when i <laughs> when i got far enough along in the second sock i realized uh, that i was not going to have enough yarn to finish that second pair of sock and after doing some estimation, I realized that I needed to do alternating heels and toes uh, in order to have enough yarn. And I have already tried to knit these, knit this yarn into a pair of socks before. It didn't work out. Um, so I was determined to get them done. So I found, I was in... Moncton, New Brunswick, or near Moncton, New Brunswick, um, for my grandmother's funeral, um, and discovered that there uh, is a needle workshop there as well as a yarn shop there, kind of right beside one another. Uh, unfortunately, the needle workshop was not open when I was there, but when I visited, the yarn shop was open, and so my goal was to find a mini skein that I would be able to use with this yarn. So I found this little brown mini skein. Uh, unfortunately, it was not an individual mini skein. It came in this set. So this is called A Year of Gnomes by Ancient Arts. It's French River PEI. I'm not sure if that's like the version of Year of Gnomes that this is or what's going on there. Can you? Um, but there were four mini skeins in that. So there's this, um, there's this light blue, this vibrant red, and this sort of red and green and yellow variegated, and then there was the brown. So I bought this set of mini skeins from Ancient Arts, which is um, a yarn dyer that I have used before and really like. Um, and when I was talking to the shop owner, uh, you know, I kind of told her that I only needed the brown for the socks that I was knitting, but that I have a scrappy blanket and I, I use mini skeins for other things. So it's not really uh, that bad to have to buy a collection of them. And when she heard that I was into scraps, she gave me for free this little sample from, uh, from, Turtle Pearl Yarns. This colorway is called Trench Coat um, Striped Turtle Toes. Anyway, it's just a little fingering weight sample. It's mostly white and black and tan, but there's a little bit of red in there as well. So it's just a cute little 10.5 um, gram. I don't know if it's actually 10.5 gram. Seems less than that. <laughs> but yeah, it's cute. And here's these. Hopefully they're showing up okay. Okay, so these socks are done. They're done. Um, all right, I have another knitting project that I've been working on. So if you were here during December, I did Vlogmas every day in December. I recorded a video. And one of the things that I did in those December daily videos was I opened um, my yarn advent calendar. So I got the Vista Fade advent calendar by Hugh Loco. Um, and I was just opening up the skeins. I didn't quite know what I was going to knit with them yet at the time. Um, but since then, I have decided that I'm going to knit a Leona dress. This is a free pattern that's available on Ravelry. Um, it is in Norwegian, so you have to translate it unless you speak Norwegian. Um, but that worked pretty well for me, and it's been going pretty well. 
Um, so here is where I'm at with my Leona dress. Again, my little ribbing flips up all the time, um, but this blue band right here is about where I was in my last video. So I have knit probably four or five inches onto it. I am through decreasing for the waist um, and I'm now knitting straight and I will be starting to increase again soon. <laughs> so here is how it is looking so far. Oh. Really excited to have that done. Um, it's great in that it is very easy because it's all knitting. Um, but it's also sometimes a little bit boring to knit because it's just all knitting. So um, I've been finding that I haven't been spending a lot of time on it. So I, I want to focus on that a little bit more too. Um, yeah, which leads me to something else. So this is sort of plans for knitting. Now that I'm done these socks, um, I want to know what your opinion is. I have two other skeins of yarn that I'd like to start, two other skeins of sock yarn, but I also have the Leona dress. So should I, A, not cast on another pair of socks, just focus on the Leona dress, or should I, B, cast on these green socks. This is a colorway by Nerds with Needles that I got at Halcon uh, this year. Or should I see cast on these socks also from Nerds with Needles, also a skein that I got at Halcon this year. What do you think? Let me know. <laughs> All right, so uh, last thing before I go, I just want to talk a little bit about diamond painting. So I have had some diamond painting in a couple videos uh, so far. I finished the owl diamond painting that I had started that I got for Christmas from my mom. So I've got some footage here of that completed piece. It's not been sealed yet and it hasn't even been hung properly. It's just sort of sitting on a um, table in our living room, but it is done um, and I like it. It's a really cute little piece, um, but I, I really did enjoy the process of doing the diamond painting on that piece. And so I've been sort of doing some research and I bought, uh, I bought three diamond paintings from Paint Plot Australia. So this company, I think, started out doing paint by numbers, hence their name. Um, and they still do do paint by numbers. You can get that on their website. But I had heard about them as a, uh, a source for diamond painting kits that is reputable in that the art that they have represented in their diamond paintings has been licensed by them, which is important to keep an eye out for. Um, so I got three kits from them and I started my first kit. Um, so hopefully I can find an image of, you know, what I clicked on <laughs> to purchase. And um, then I, I will be showing you some footage of the in progress diamond painting that I'm currently doing. I'm about a third of the way uh, done that diamond painting now. And uh, these are square drills, which is an important thing with diamond, diamond painting. You can have square or circular drills. These are square. Um, I've heard that square is sometimes harder than circular maybe, um, but that it's sort of, the, the diamonds are fitting together more closely, which is maybe why it's harder, but also it kind of looks a little shinier. So I decided to try the square. I'm enjoying it. Haven't had too much trouble uh, with it. Um, but yeah, I don't know how well the image is rendered. It's not very big. So I might look for that in future if I'm doing these sort of landscape images, which seems to be kind of what 
I am drawn towards with diamond painting. Um, I might want to make sure that the pieces that I'm getting are even bigger than this just so that the details um, you know turn out looking good so I, I think it's looking good I'm enjoying it I love the colors um, but I, I do think it's a little pixelated and a little messy looking compared to the image that um, that I clicked on that I kind of decided that I wanted so uh, yeah I don't know I, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't buy from them again but I am going to try other sources next time that I want to buy some more diamond paintings but I did get three from them to avoid having to pay for shipping so I'm gonna do those three before I buy any more um, yeah I think that's about it for today um, thank you so much for sticking with me if you watch the whole video appreciate it uh, let me know what you thought of my projects. Let me know what you think I should knit next or whether I should just focus on my dress. Um, and let me know what you're working on and what you've been sort of loving lately down in the comments below. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.